Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are going to make our demands to the Lord right now. Are you ready? Now listen, whenever we do this, release your faith. So how do I release your faith? How do I release my faith? Keep in mind that you are obeying God's command. Now that's what faith is. Faith is you responding to what God has said. So did God say we should do this? Yes, he said so. He said, he told me and I brought it to you. And that's why the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Then he says, believe in his prophet. Now, what does it mean, believe in his prophet? Believe that when his prophet says that God said this, that you should do. If you believe, of course, not every prophet. Now, you trust that this is a prophet of God. Praise God. And then he says, believe and you will prosper. Praise God. So, so now this is the line of prosperity that we are doing. We're towing that line of prosperity now. So are you ready? Say with me, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. Oh, I receive an overflow of it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive it it's coming to you. A miracle is coming to you today. Praise God. Let's pray now. Father, we bless you for today's broadcast. Thank you for burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I just sense in my spirit that someone is going to encounter something big today. I mean, an opportunity is going to open up to you today that you are going to be so glad for the rest of your life. Praise God. Yeah. It, it, it's yours. Receive it in Jesus' name. It's an opportunity that's going to change your life forever. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. For good. For good. Praise God. Now then, we, we've been looking at God specifically supplying our needs and and in 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 an abundant way because the lord said this month i'm going to supply your needs and he's saying in, in such a way in, in an abundance there's going to be an abundant supply a supernatural supply that is going to be abundant praise god so you open your heart now that's why i'm taking the steps to lay the foundation because you see if your heart is not solid to receive what god has planned to do you will just get freckles and you'll be so excited now he is telling us that beware hebrews 13 from verse 5 beware of covetousness or, or let your manner of life be without covetousness don't let covetousness get into your heart and i explain what covetousness is rather he says be content with the things that you have and i explained that to you on monday he says be content be okay be satisfied with what you have today why because what you have today is all you need now you remember jesus was with the disciples and they said, oh, I think I should read it. I should read this John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and from verse 5. And it says, when Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now it says, when, verse 6, verse 5, sorry. It says, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, what did he say to Philip? When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now, I want you to follow this now. Very interesting. He said, where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? Now, look at it. They were in this place. And now, watch. Let's, let's just read. Verse 6. And this he said to prove him. To prove who? Philip. For he himself knew what he would do. 
Yeah. Philip, the one he asked, verse 7, answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. <laughs> now, I, I believe Philip would have turned over to Judas and said, hey, Judas, do we have money? And he said, yeah, we, we've got about 200, you know, 200, what they say, the 200 penny. He said, oh, he looked at the crowd and he knew the price of bread. Just like you know, the you, you, know, you have an idea how much bread is sold today. And then you look at this crowd and you're trying to imagine how much bread is going to feed all these people. Now, follow this now. Verse 7. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little, not even to be their food, <laughs> a little. Now, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they among so many now you following this so jesus said hey where are we going to get bread to feed all those people and, and philip said lord the money we have if we have to buy bread with all the money we have it's not even going to be enough for them to take a little and andrew said hey there is a lad here who had five loaves of bread and two small fishes. Now, he said, but what are, what are they among so many? Now, look at what Jesus said. And Jesus said to him, make the men sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now, watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this to, I told you something we read, read in, in Hebrews 13 verse 5. He says, be content with what you have and i said the reason he said that is because what you have is enough for what you need to do so now here's the story and jesus looked at the crowd and he knew he was going to feed them because the holy spirit had said feed them yeah that's what happened and, and jesus turned over to philip and said hey philip we're well, going to get bread to it uh, lord we, we can even if we buy bread with all the money we have and jesus said nah now, in Matthew, Jesus said, what do you have? Now, over here, Andrew spoke up and said, eh, there's, there's one guy who had. Now, by the Spirit of God, we understand that the boy had already given to the ministry of Jesus those five loaves and two fishes. Now, he, he had brought it to Jesus as an offering. And he had given it to the disciples. Yeah. Now, that's why Andrew said, there is a boy, a lad here who had. Now, of course, what he was communicating is, look, a, a little boy had this and he has already given it to us. So that is what we have right now. And Jesus said, make the people sit down. And then they sat down. He took it. He blessed it. He didn't say, oh, Lord, this thing is too small. No, he took it and he blessed it and distributed it among the people. And guess what? They ate to their full. What does that tell you? What they had, which was five loaves and two fishes, was just enough what, for what they need to do that day. Now think about it. What they, they need to do that day, they needed to feed those people that were more than 5,000. But what they had was enough. Think about it. Jesus asked, what do you have? Five loaves and two fishes. You remember the, 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 the woman that Elisha went to her house, so she complained to Elisha, said, ah, look, my, my husband was a prophet and he has, he has done so much for God, but now he's dead and the creditors are coming. I don't know what to do. 
And what did the prophet ask her? What do you have? He said, nothing but just this jar of oil. He said, fine, what you have is enough for what you need to do. So what do, what, what do I need to do? You need to pay all those people, right? Yeah, so what do you do with what you have? Go get um, vessels. He said, go gather all the vessels you can gather. And then lock yourself up and begin to pour. Now you see? And now she began to pour. And guess what? She got enough money. He told her, go sell the oil and, and pay all the people you're owing and leave on the rest. Praise God. And that's exactly what she meaning. What she had was just enough. I wish you would come to this understanding. Now, that is what it means by not being covetous. That is what it means by being content with what you have. You know, somebody say, hey, I, I just, I want to start a business. All I have is this meager amount of money. Not even enough to, to, to start the business. Hey, listen to me. What you have in your hands is exactly what is enough for that business to start today. Ah, no, 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 Pastor, that's why you don't understand what I'm talking. Hey, I'm telling you the truth. What you have in your hands. Now, all you need to do is to get before the Lord and say, Lord, should I start up this business? And then he says, yes, go ahead and start the business. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, he says, he's told you go ahead and start the business. And then you come around and say, um, okay, that means he's going to give me money to start the business. And then you now start another race by waiting and waiting and waiting. A day pass, one week, one month, one year. Hey, what I God told me that I should go into social business. So why haven't you started yet? I'm waiting for capital. Come on now. You don't know God. You don't know God. If you know God, the day he said, go and start. That very day you would have started. Say, but I didn't have the money. I need to buy this equipment. I need to buy it. Hey, he says, go start. And what you have is what is enough for you to start. So what should I have done? Ask him, Lord. Okay, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So what direction should I go? Don't say, okay, Lord. So I'm waiting for the money. No, no. Which direction should I go? Now, let me tell you something. Do you know sometimes what you have may just be enough to pay your transport fare to the place where you will meet the next miracle. So you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm willing to start. I'm ready to start. So which direction should I go? Learn to ask the Lord the right question. That is what is, is stagnating a lot of people. They don't know the right questions to ask. They stand before the presence of God. They don't even know what to say. They don't know the right words to speak. So say, Lord, which direction should I go? How should I go with it? With, with, because I believe I can start. I'm ready to start. And then the Lord said, go meet Susan so person. Oh, I see. So you call up the person. Hey, I need to come see you. He said, all right, come over. And you will always have something. That's the truth. You will always have something. Even if what you have is just enough to buy credit on your phone and make a phone call. You have something. But you must learn to relate with the Spirit of God so He guides you on how to start, on how to go about it. Because God, He halabashatayar. <laughs> Do you know what it is for Him to be with you? So He was with the disciples. And He said, what do we have? He said, five loaves and two fishes. All right, bring them to me. And they put it in the hands of Jesus. You remember that, that, that woman that God sent Elijah to? He said, look, sir, I don't have anything. All I have is this bread that I'm making now. And, and when I'm done, we'll eat it and we die. He said, don't be afraid. Give it to me first. And she put it in his hands. And he blessed it and blessed her. And the Bible said the bread never finished for many days. She fed him, fed herself, fed her son and her household. And they ate for many days. What you have is what you need. And it's enough. Praise God. I'll stop here today. Hallelujah. Listen, this is getting interesting. I want you to, listen. It's not everyone that can receive this word. If you can receive it in your spirit, 
Blessed are you. Praise God. It means you have been called to believe it. And know what that means? A miracle is about to happen in your life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.